We're in the Wild West at the moment, and I see a lot of people playing around with AI, just seeing how to do things. And I think that's great. But along the way, we need to kind of start to think about, okay, that sounds great. That sounds really cool. But what's the ethical side of it? Is this allowing us to be more human? You're listening to the Content 10X podcast, where it's all about content repurposing. I'm Amy Woods, and I'm here to help you maximize your content and find smart ways to get your message in front of more of the right people, whilst also saving time. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Content 10X podcast. I'm your host, Amy Woods, and in this episode, we are continuing our conversation about AI and its impact on B2B marketing. And I'm joined by my good friend, Ian Anderson Gray. It is the second time that Ian's been on the Content 10X podcast. He is the founder of the Confident Live Marketing Academy, and he helps entrepreneurs through the use of live video and podcasting. But he's also a coach, a consultant, a creator, a speaker, a brand partner, an all-round top guy. And he's hugely experienced when it comes to the world of generative AI. So I asked Ian to join me on this podcast so we can talk about how we can keep things human when AI is helping us out. We also cover the primary benefits from integrating AI into content creation processes. We talked about automated blogs and podcasts created entirely by AI. We delve into the tools that Ian is using that he really recommends and why, and also some of the ethical considerations when using AI for content creation. This is a fantastic conversation. I'm sure that you're going to really love this one. So let's dive in. Ian, welcome back to the Content 10X podcast. Thanks, Amy. It's great to be back. Well, you're one of the the privileged few that come come back onto the show, Ian, because we have so many great guests. So to be invited back on, you know, it's a, it's, it's a big deal. It says a lot about about what we think of you, which is they think you're fantastic. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to this conversation. It's going to be a great chat about AI, I'm sure it is. And I recently had a fascinating conversation with Christopher Penn on the Content 10X podcast. And with that, we were talking about generative AI search and how to create content with Gen AI in mind, because people often go there versus the search engine. So we were talking about you know, what you need to do to be training the generative AI tools to know you and, and control the narrative of how they know you. So that was a really useful discussion in that world of AI. Whereas today, I'd love to talk to you about another aspect of AI, which is us actually using AI for our own content creation. And I know this is something that you know an awful lot about. And in particular, you know, how do we keep things human when we're using these bots to help us create our content? So there are loads of broad and varied ways that we can get to help in hand with AI. So on that, I'd, I'd love to get started by talking to you about some of the fairly extreme examples of AI in content creation, and then we can get a bit more down to, you know, the kind of ways that us as content creators could be using it day to day. But what are some of the extreme examples of AI in content creation that you've seen recently? Yeah, we're kind of in the Wild West at the moment. And I see a lot of people playing around with AI, uh, just seeing what how to do things. And I think that's great. But along the way, we need to kind of start to think about, okay, that that sounds great. That sounds really cool. But what's the ethical side of it? Is is this allowing us to be more human? So I've seen, that, for example, I've seen a, a tool that somebody's created that basically you give it a, a, a category. So it could be, for example, it could be content marketing. And then you the AI basically picks the content and then it will create blog posts on your blog every day from that with a prompt that's been created. So I've, I've seen it so that it's trying to create it in your voice and in your style, <clears throat> it creates the title, creates the blog post, heads off to mid journey, gets the blog post image, puts that on there. And you've got a basically an automated blog that just keeps spouting out all this content every day. So that's, that's one uh, thing I've seen. And, <laughs> and then my friend, Mike Russell's created this really cool system, which 
is an automated podcast, which is along the same lines, but it's it's completely mind blowing because he's cloned his voice. And I, I've been playing around this. There's a service from Eleven Labs that allows you to clone your voice. You upload at least I think they say 45 minutes plus of you speaking. And uh, what you can then do is, again, you can either choose the content that you want or you can, again, automate the latest news, for example, and then get that get AI like ChatGPT or whatever to convert that into a script for your podcast, get the Eleven Labs cloned voice to speak that, and then upload it to your podcast host and you've got a daily podcast with your voice. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some interesting things you can do there. Uh, and I'm sure we can talk about the ethics and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, th those are a couple of things that I've seen. So what's your position in terms of adding some kind of disclaimer or something to, to, to say, you know, this content is, has been generated purely by AI? Like what, what do you think is the right thing to do in that regard? So I think... Well, the first thing before I answer that, I would say there's perhaps there's, I think it's important to talk about the difference between what I would call functional content and creative content. And I don't have a problem with, for example, the podcast idea being fully automated, as long as you're upfront about that, you know? And so I think one idea that I have is that if I was going to create uh, that automated podcast, which I'm kind of thinking about doing, uh, I would probably make a little bit of a joke of it and say, hello, this is Bob. This is Ian's AI cousin, we've been told. We sound quite alike. Uh, so you can have a, have a bit of a joke with it. Uh, but also, I think it's important to do that because not just because I think you need to be truthful with your audience, but also sometimes AI can get it wrong. So when I was testing uh, with Eleven Labs, it, it pronounced something incorrectly. So, you know, you get these hilarious kind of mispronunciations of words and acronyms uh, because it just doesn't know how, how, how to do that. So, but I, I think in all those cases, you need to say this is generated with AI. We're, we're doing this to be to give you helpful content. But I think you do need to be honest and open about it. Yeah, and I feel like, I mean, it, it's fascinating to me that people could even leave these things to be set and forget because, you know, I, you know, I, I very much think that AI in that regard, like writing a blog post or maybe writing a script for a podcast episode, never mind going on and actually cloning a voice and recording it. But, you know, I, I very much think that, it, I guess my view is it can often help you go from a blank canvas to an outline and maybe an outline to a first draft. But there's always going to need to be that human review. And as you said, like Christopher Penn said this in the interview I had with him that it lies. It just, it, it's a liar. Sometimes it just completely makes things up and also just gets the wrong end of the stick, gets things wrong as well. You know, it, it, it really made me laugh the other day when we set the notes generator feature live on one of our team calls, just minuting a meeting. And, you know, it, it couldn't, look, I guess, it, you know, it's, it's understandable, but it didn't distinguish between some of the chat around the main focus of the meeting. So, one of the members of the team mentioned that they were a little bit hungry when we got started. Can't wait for lunch after the meeting. And, you know, one of the agenda items at the end was like, Hayley's going to have a banana after this meeting or something like that. And it was just like, you know, and I, and I just think, can you imagine just set and forget and just leave him every day, daily blog posts, goes and creates, goes and gets the image, goes and um, finds the information, puts out a blog post, but also... I don't know when you when you were saying about what the intention is, you know, valuable content. It makes me kind of think, I don't know, do, does your audience and does the world need a completely robot AI generated daily post or as well, like the, the quantity and quality aspects and things like that? It's quite interesting, isn't it? I think, I, I know I completely agree. And I think in the case of this podcast, the Mike Russell's podcast, it's a daily podcast on the latest AI news. And so I think in that case, that, that kind of makes sense to me because it's it's kind of giving you the latest. It's, it's, it's also, it's like a three minute podcast. It's just very, very quick to the point. It's not like a whole podcast. Not, and I think that that kind of makes sense. And in the, in the same way that like I use AI for my show notes sometimes. And again, I would call that functional content because 
it's just giving people like they listen to the podcast and they would just they just want to know the summary of what happened in that so it doesn't have to, it's not and i'm really honest about that it doesn't have to be it's not like written by me but i think if it was like full blog posts it gets a bit depressing i'm sure you've done the same you, you google something and you come to a blog post that tells you how to do something and it's obviously written by ai because it doesn't actually tell you anything and it's so bland so i th i do think I think that's really important. And yes, okay, all of these tools are only going to get better, but they still, at the moment at least, lack that creativity. Uh, and then the other, the other thing that I've seen people do is is clone, not just clone their voice, but clone them their video as well. So they have their own avatar, and th so then you have the, you, you know, you know what it's like creating content. It takes a lot of work, but now you can create thousands of short form video with your avatar, you can tell it what to say. You can use these LLM tools just to come up with the same kind of script, but subtly different, like 50 times and then pump that out. And so, you know, we, we already had content shock. When was it? I don't know, quite a few years ago. What, what it, now it's just, you kind of wonder, are people just going to give up? <laughs> because there's just so much content now. So I, I, I think we need to use all of these tools to help us to become more human, to help us to become more creative. And that's, that's the take that I have on all of this. Uh, I, I do use it automated for functional content, but for the, all of the other content, I use it in the process to help me with ideas and help me with my creativity and actually help me to become more human. Where do you, I guess, see the, the main primary benefit? So in the content that you create and, you know, people listening in to this are likely to be content creators or working in content marketing and marketing within organizations. Where do you see the primary benefits come from for the AI tools that, that you're embracing at the moment? Wow, there's so many. I mean, well, I, I'll tell you the, the one that I'm really excited. Well, I'm actually excited about most of them. But the, uh, so I use the the ChatGPT app on my on my phone, the, the voice part I particularly love. So I was dropping my daughter off in, in Manchester. She had a rehearsal. And on the way back, I had a half hour journey and I had all these ideas. And I'm, I'm sure you know what this is like for my business. And they were all cluttered. They were all kind of swirling around. And I thought, why don't I just use talk with ChatGPT to help it kind of give me some clarity. And so we just had this, it was very strange. We had this conversation on the way back and I was telling ChatGPT about all my business ideas. I was asking it, well, maybe I could get some help. Do I need a business consultant, a business coach? Can you give me some advice on this? And by the end of the journey, I, I just knew exactly what I was should be thinking about. It kind of decluttered and organized all of my thoughts. So I find that amazing. And then the other thing that I find really helpful. So I'm going to be totally honest. One thing that I've really struggled with in my content is my newsletter, my email newsletter. I, I don't know what it is. I just have this mental block. So, you know, I can write blog posts. I can, I can do all the rest of it. But when it comes to my newsletter, I struggle. So what I've now got is I've got a prompt that takes my latest episode of my podcast, it pumps in the, the show notes from the, the transcript. It knows everything about my guest. It knows everything about me. It's a really, really detailed uh, prompt. It knows the structure of the newsletter, as well as also this, this tool also creates my YouTube description, my Facebook posts. And so it creates all of that for me. Now I don't go down the automated route. So I suppose I could just then pump it all out and not check it, but for me, actually, in a lot of cases, I almost rewrite it. But because I'm starting with something with some ideas, and, and sometimes it gets things wrong, and I think that's not what I want. And actually, that's important information, because if sometimes not know, knowing what you don't want to do is, is really useful information. But what it does do is it gives me the right structure, it comes up with some really interesting ideas. And so I can have actually been a lot more consistent with my content because of that. So it's certainly not or fully automated, but it knows my voice. It knows the format that I want and the structure. And so, yeah, that's, that's something I'm finding really, really helpful. And with regard to the, the prompts that you use for that. So with each episode, when you get, like you said, great descriptions and posts and show notes and things like that, 
Is it a, a really specific detailed prompt that you repeat, but you just fill in the different gaps for the different guest and episode and things like that? So you've got a bit of a template filling the gaps. Do you remember the, the days of mer, um, word and mail merge, you know, mail merging? So you've got a yeah, document. Yeah, I wasn't very you... good at mail merge. No, I wasn't. I do remember it. But... <laughs> so it was like, dear first name. How are you today? You know, that kind of thing. So the, that's what the prompt is like, really. So I have for my podcast, I actually have two or three different, how would I call it, themes of, of episodes. So like for mine, I'll have one on confidence and then one on tech. And so the prompt, so I'll use a different one for each one. It will, it'll have the, here are the details of my guests. So it'll give their name, their bio, uh, where they're from, the, and then the title of, of the podcast. It then pastes in the show notes, which I take from a tool called Descript. So what D Descript, in fact, uses AI. So it um, transcribes my podcast, and then I can say, give me some show notes. And the show notes aren't that great, to be honest, but they what, what it does do is it gives me the timestamps of the, the best bits of my podcast, and those are really good. So I paste that into the prompt as well. And I tell it the format, I tell it what I don't want. So I want you to avoid certain phrases. So there's these phrases that, uh, and words that AI tends to overuse, like hit the ground running and I don't know, level up, all that kind of stuff, all those kind of words. So you, I, I say what I don't want it to do. I say, try and put a, an element of humor in it. Uh, to use, in my case, use British, UK, uh, British spelling, British English spelling, although what my audience is a lot of uh, are Americans, so maybe I don't need to worry about that. But you know, what I'm saying is you can be really specific in the prompts. And it's not to say what you get out is perfect, but it's a lot better than um, it was. And I'm actually going to experiment now, depending on when this episode goes out, it, this information may may be out of date, because it keeps changing. But I've been using chat GPT for O. But Claude, uh, Claude Sonnet 3.5 has overtaken 4.0 now in terms of the quality. And I've got some really, really interesting, um, yeah, just really good results with that. So I, I'm kind of ch tweaking it and changing it over time. But it's the same prompt. That's the great thing. The prompt stays the same. Hey, just a little break from this week's episode to let you know about becoming a content 10x insider. If you want more content repurposing tips and advice, then why not join hundreds of business owners, marketers, and content creators who get them delivered straight to their inbox once a week by subscribing to the Content 10X newsletter. As well as tips and advice, you get industry updates, inspiring stories, exclusive content offers, and more. You can subscribe at content10x.com forward slash newsletter, and there's a link in the show notes too. Okay, back to this week's episode. I mean, the fact that, you know, prompt engineer and, and prompt consultant is now a, a real job description, isn't it, for people to get I should put that on my website, right. really, shouldn't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, like you said, I think it's about it, it, working in that way and being really efficient and building in those processes with, with robust prompts that work, but filling in the gaps and then knowing the the strengths of what will come out and then also knowing some of the weaknesses that you then know to address because you just know that as a weakness and bringing the human side and making sure that these things are human, knowing how to beat, beat out the robotic side. It's funny you should mention that there's, there's certain words that uh, ChatGPT um, uses all the time because the team and I were laughing the other day at this um, Facebook post that a company had put out where a girl was just moving on, she had another job, that was it. But they must have asked ChatGPT to write the leaving announcement that they put on Facebook and um, it just looked like it was written as an obituary so it was written as if she died really <laughs> but it had an image of her in black and white and it was like you know it's with a heavy heart that we you know bid a very sad farewell to a very cherished member of the team and things like that but then it had those chat GPT sayings of it said it ended with things like as she as she goes on to new beginnings and endless possibilities in this world you're like oh that's a chat GPT so I get what's happened but I, I, it, it, you can train it's what you put in is what you get out isn't it and it's a bit like training a child or training a, a toddler I think we're putting in a set of of commands and we're able to use everyday 
language in order to communicate with these tools, which is brilliant because we're not having to learn C++ or coding languages. We can use everyday language. But in the same way that you'd have to keep training and training um, a human being, you just have to keep training and, and training the tools until they can do what you want. Got to keep testing it, haven't you? Keep testing. And and actually, you can use, you can use uh, AI tools but to help improve the prompt. So I I will put the prompt back, prompts back. Like I, I that's not quite what I wanted there. Please can like can I, can we avoid this? How would you improve this prompt to make it better? And, and uh, again, you need to be very specific with that. But test that out, and, and over time, you you will it, you will see big improvements. Absolutely. And in terms of tools that you've mentioned, obviously you've mentioned a few here already. Um, are there any other key ones that are really taking your attention at the moment and mind finding a way into your process flows. Yeah. So I use notion a lot, um, to, to kind of store all of my information that's got AI built into it. So you've got AI summaries. So I've got, for example, all the podcast episodes that I've been a guest on and all my podcast episodes, and it has summaries and you can find information using notion. I've mentioned Descript, which is, has, is, I think they call the AI tool, the underlord, which is very strange. Yeah, so you've got the transcription side of things, which is kind of AI. You've got this, um, it's it's kind of quite freaky, but basically it changes where your eyes are looking. So quite often, if your guest is not looking at the camera, they're looking at the screen, that it, 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 it you have that kind of disconnect. So what it can do is it can fix that and it can make the eyes look at the camera or make it look like they're looking at the camera, which most of the time works really well. Sometimes it doesn't, and it's a little bit weird. So you've got uh, tools like that. I use a tool called Libra Chat, which is not for the faint hearted, but because um, you have to in, kind of install it on your on a server. Uh, and so, but the thing I like about it is that it allows you to access all the different LLMs. So I can start with ChatGPT 4.0 and then pass it on to Claude and say, can you do better? And then say, actually, let's go to Gemini now. And so you can go around all of them. Um, and if that's, if, if the idea of installing on the server scares you, there's a great tool called Magi. That's my, my friend Dustin Stout is his tool and, uh, it's really cool. And it has a similar kind of thing because you can plug in lots of different, um, LLMs into there as well. So that's, yeah, there's so many, there's obviously mid journey as well. Um, is, is a tool, there's Adobe express has some really cool tools in there that it's, um, you can use AI. So for example, generative images and things like that. Photoshop as well. I've used that to, for example, on my website, I have got some photos, but I want, I wanted this photo to be longer. So I actually extended the photo out, um, using Photoshop and I'm, I'm not a designer, so I managed to do it. Um, it's magi.co. So M A G A I dot co is the website from before. It's so funny you should say that, Ian, because this morning on my morning walk, I listened to, is it Dustin, did you say? Yeah, the founder of, I listened to a podcast interview with him. He was on Michael Stelzner's new, well, I don't know if it's new, but new to me podcast. I've been listening to it a little bit, talking all about exactly what you just said. And Jay Bear, who we work with and a friend, he mentions Magi quite a lot as well. So it's definitely one to check out. I wanted to ask you about, custom GPT. So what, what is custom GPT and how can it be used? What are the kind of use cases for that? With most of these LLMs, these AI tools like ChatGPT, you can actually go in and add custom instructions. So you can, for example, when I go to ChatGPT and I start interacting with it, it already knows who I am. That's because I've told it what I am. I've told my name, uh, information about what I do, my family and all that kind of stuff. So I don't have to kind of add that to the prompt every time, but you can take that further by creating your own custom GPT. And so think about it, you're creating your own virtual or, or AI assistant. Uh, and so when you go to uh, chat GPT and other, other LLMs have this, but uh, the one with chat GPT is particularly good. You can basically create your own and it will ask you, what do you want this? What do you want this assistant to be? even will generate a little avatar for you. Uh, you can upload uh, files, so you can upload PDFs. So for example, I've got one where it understands my business, my revenue streams, my mission statement. And so it's kind of like my business consultant, 
So it has all of that information. It knows, well, not everything about me, but it knows a lot of information about me. I've given it the data. And so it can then, uh, it's, it's, it's a, cha- a custom GPT is you create for a specific task. And I think you, it's good to make that really niche. So you can create a, a custom GPT that will say, for example, be your business consultant, but you could then create another custom GPT, which is your content generator. And maybe you have another custom GPT that understands your perfect customer. And then you can get all of them talking to each other. So you can get the business consultant GPT. I hope I'm not going too quickly here, but you got that. You can talk to the customer GPT. So it will generate, I suppose, avatars to understand who that is. And then that can then talk to your content uh, creator uh, GPT that can take all that information and then generate some, for example, some Facebook posts or, or even some ideas for blog posts from all of that other information from from all from that custom gpt that you created before so there's so much that you can do you can you can even do what create one that will uh take pictures you take pictures of the inside of your fridge and it will analyze what's in your fridge so it will say oh you've got some potatoes on the top shelf and you've got some philadelphia on the middle shelf and then it will come up with some recipe ideas knowing exactly how many people are in the house that one of you is a vegetarian that you've got two kids uh and maybe even the day of the week so it's a tuesday well actually um we need a bit we need to actually eat dinner at lunchtime or whatever so do you see what i mean it's it's the the, the it's so many different things you can do with all of these tools it's amazing yeah so it's like having lots of different butlers that help with different parts of your life and PAs and assistants and a butler around the house, a few VAs and PAs in the business and a business coach and things like that. And like you said, you can get them to talk to each other. That sounds like a kind of, wow, sort of next level in terms of of using AI. Um, I wanted to just go back to when we were talking about uh, editing and you mentioned about Photoshop and how you wanted to extend out um, a photo, but also Descript and you think that I contact changer. I often do videos and say to my team, you know, by the way, can you sort my eyes out? I'm not looking at the camera because because Descript does that and they'll do that. I wanted to ask you, so when you're creating content, so we're doing something like a podcast episode like this, or you have guests on a webinar or that kind of thing, and then you're using AI tools to maybe help with some of the post-production and the editing. Now we talked about changing eye contact. Of course, there are tools that will change people's faces to go from frowning to smiling and things like that. You and I have talked before separately about um, a tool that you shared that I used once, which changed me to speak in, it changed my voice to speak in French and Italian instead of English. What do you think about if you were about to do an edit where you're editing you and your guest you can you can consent to whatever if it's you can't you but say it's your guest and you're going to adjust the eye contact a bit and maybe there was a still photo and they don't look quite like they're smiling i know photoshop and editing is nothing new by the way or as far as like changing the voice the language should there be all sorts of consent i guess and like rules and things like that around the editing of others with ai tools as well I, th- I, th- I think so. So like, I think with the eye contact thing, I think it's unlikely that your guest is going to say no, but I, I just, I think it's the right thing to do. So like, just so you can say to your guest, look, uh, we just, just want to check with you. We, we were just going to, um, we've got a tool that just helps with the eye contact. Do you, do, are you happy with us doing that? You can see some examples we've done before. That they're probably not going to say no. And if they say no, well, it's a good job you asked because if they notice, then, I mean, they might not notice, but I just think that's the right thing to do with the, with the languages thing. Again, you know, I think again, it, I can't see any reason why they would not want that. Um, but I think also when you're, you're, for example, when you're publishing video, when you have used an AI tool to change the language and these tools are amazing because it even changes the shape of your lips when they're moving they're not perfect but they're pretty good and when i changed my voice into italian there's a italian friend of mine and he says that it's like almost flawless there was one bit when it couldn't cope with my name so i think it says hello i i'm ian 
Anderson Gray, da, 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 and he couldn't, I didn't know I had three names. It's my fault for having three names. But I think, um, yeah, I, I think when you're creating that content, I think you need to be really uh, upfront. We've uh, translated this using AI. Um, but yes, do do ask do ask your guests. It's it's one thing you changing your voice or your your something about you, but I think you always need to ask. Yeah, I do as well. Went for something significant at least. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you um, in terms of where we think AI is going? These easier to use like generative AI tools. Are things change at such a fast pace, and this is quite a challenging question, but. Where do you see it evolving? Like, what do you think a content marketing team or content marketer, so a marketer, what do you think that might look like in the next few years in terms of where we think it's all evolving and going? I find these kind of questions really hard because it is changing so, so quickly. So these tools are only going to get better, but they are what they're not what we call um, AGI. This is not, they're not going to completely replace humans with being able to kind of uh, learn from mistakes and, and have this kind of inbuilt creativity. They're, they're, they're kind of narrow LL, LLMs, narrow AI. Um, they, they, will only they will only improve, but they are being trained on our data. And so there's a limit to how creative they can be. They can think out of the box or they can think out of your box so they can come up with ideas that you might not have thought of but the human brain is still much better at coming up with kind of out of the box ideas i think so i would i think even in in a couple of years time unless we do get agi which i don't think is going to happen i know elon musk says it, we're going to get it next year but i'm not sure whether he was joking or not i think um I think we're still going to want to have human beings. We're still, even when you create a lot more content using AI, I think you're going to want to check it. You're probably going to want to add, uh, add your own bits to it. I think that's the ethical thing to do. I think that I, I I'm, I'm just a big believer in using AI to help you to become more human. And this is what I, when I read content, when I listen to content, I just want, I, I want the human part of it as well. I don't want it all completely bland and AI driven even as it gets better and better, because I still think humans will have that edge. And maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe uh, we'll get something like ridiculous next year that comes completely surpasses all of that, but I don't think so. No, I don't. I've heard interesting takes where people have said that there's just going to be such an abundance of poorly written, unedited, robotic, written content that people are going to start getting even more cut off almost the medium of written content um, because it's hard to wade through and find the good quality, human, thought-provoking, insightful content because of all of the written content that maybe it's better to focus on other mediums as people become a tip bit toned after to written content. But what, what do you think about that? That's a really interesting point. And so I mean, live video is an interesting thing. I've, I've been teaching live video for years and years. Um, well, mainly since 2016 when Facebook live came out and it's had, a, it's reached its peak, I think in about 2020, 2021, and then it's had quite a dip in usage. And you get these kind of people saying, um, it's the end of, of live video, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I actually think that with, with AI, we're going to get a resurgence of live video because Okay, I will I have a, I'll add a caveat here in in China and they are there are 24 hour live shopping channels. They're all live video with live avatars. So you can have AI generated live video. But I think when you when you're actually having a live video when you're interacting with the audience and you're interacting with the guest and you're having a conversation and things go wrong as well, <laughs> which generally tend, tend to happen when you do live video. I think we're going to see more of that. We're going, people are going to want to go back to a little bit more of that human side of things. We're, we're going to want not so much of the perfect content that AI, well, not that it is perfect, it's going to get things wrong, but you know what I mean? There's more of that human side of things. So I, I'm excited about that. I think AI, AI has its place. AI generated content has its place, but I think we're going to want a little bit more raw, authentic human content too. Mm, I agree. 
and and I agree what you said before about that differentiation between the functional commodity type content and then the you know the the content that is more uh, thought provoking, insightful, human led content, and the being a com- you know the, there's different rules and different games for the different types of content as well. But yeah, I completely agree with you, and it's always a hard question and a hard thing to think about because things move so fast don't they I mean you know things are changing but um yeah I think that's really insightful so one one final question if you were sort of told that you were only allowed to use one AI tool there was some kind of law that passed that like it's got out of out it's got out of control so only every person can use one AI tool and that's it (laughs) what would it be at this moment in time I'm sure the answer will change very quickly as things evolve but right now like if you were stripped of all of them what would you keep well I I think it would be something like chat GPT uh, particularly the voice uh, part of it because I just love to have those conversations and get, get ideas but also like I've been able to create these really cool tools using chat GPT. I, I know enough coding to, to be dangerous, but uh, I have my limitations. So I've been able to input, I've asked chat GPT, can you create this? Can you create this? So I've created this tool that goes into my Gmail, scans my latest email and gives me a summary of all of them. I would never been able to do that myself, but chat GPT can do that. So there's absolutely no question it'd be that I think, and, and being able to interact with it. It's just amazing. And I can't wait to see how that's going to improve and, and, Yes, there's the scary side of like, okay, giving it more information about our life, our calendar and our email and stuff. Yeah, there's, there's the privacy side of things. And there are questions of whether open AI can be trusted with that. But if we can, if we could have a tool like that, that has makes sense of our lives and is able to be our assistant and is going to be able to check our email and tell us like a snapshot of, of what we're going to be doing on that day. That'd be amazing. I'd love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, there's this this way there's so much to talk about that be a new episode but you like mentioning about the um the ethical side like i think it's really interesting that everything we put in we are feeding it with information and it's a whole other conversation isn't it but you do have to look at some of the tools to see ultimately what they do with and um who owns the content put in um well that's a whole other conversation so <laughs> we'll have to book we'll have to book part two won't we um well thank you so much Ian it's been a, an amazing conversation it's just been so enlightening it's so interesting to hear about your views and how you use AI and and all of that where would you like people to go to get in touch like you know that they heard this episode that they thought it was fantastic <laughs> where should people head over to connect with you well, I've I've kind of scattered myself across all the socials. So like probably LinkedIn or Facebook uh, or X or, or good or even Instagram. I don't really mind uh, just wherever you feel comfortable. On my website, iag.me, there's a little contact form. So you could just uh, send me a message through there as well. Love to hear from you. Think, hear what your ideas are on all of this. And if, if I can answer any questions, I'd be happy to. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks, Ian. All the notes will be in the, all the links will be in the show notes. Um, so that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ian. It's been a great conversation. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that discussion and thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy the Content 10X podcast, then why not hit that subscribe button on your podcast listening app of choice so that you can get updated when new episodes are released. And I'd really, really appreciate it if you could leave a review as well. That really makes a difference for the podcast. Also, please do get a copy of my book, Content 10X, More Content, Less Time, Maximum Results. It is the ultimate guide to repurposing every type of content and it's available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback and also in audiobook as well and you can head to content10x.com forward slash book to find all the other places that you can get a copy of my book and if you would like us to do your content repurposing for you then we offer a fully end-to-end done for you content repurposing service this is for podcasters and video content creators we have our podcast 10x video 
SEO 10X and also our specific LinkedIn 10X service, helping you to become the leading authority in your industry on LinkedIn. You can find out so much more about our services on our website. And also please do give me a follow on the social media platforms. I share lots and lots of tips and advice on social media about content repurposing. I'm at Content 10X on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And if you try content10x.com forward slash LinkedIn, you'll find my LinkedIn profile over there as well. All that's left to say is thank you so much for listening to this week's episode and I'll catch you in the next one.